I hope you're all having a great day today. Um, today's video is going to be actually really, really interesting. I wanted to show you really quickly um, a new method of dodge and burn that we have. And I call it new because it's something that Stefan and the team at Infinite Tools came up with. This is something that I've requested. It wasn't something that I made. It was something that they made. Um, and being team members, I'm just really glad this happened. Um, and for those of you who don't know, we recently launched this uh, Infinite Retouch plugin for Photoshop. And if you would like to download it and try along with me for free, you're able to do so. Just simply download it on the link in the description at infinite-tools.com. And within the plugin itself, um, it has a bunch of retouching tools. And, and what I mean by that, it has a bunch of tools and functions and abilities to incorporate in your retouching workflow in order to make it a little bit easier for you to set up your workflow. A part of that workflow being your dodge and burn. And we have a retouch tab, a tools tab, etc. And you can use all this for as long as you want for free. The only thing that you cannot do um, unless you get the paid version is save anything that you modify. So with that being said, I want to show you really quickly um, going into this and I'll explain the plugin a little bit later. But if you come over to the retouch tab here, on the right hand side, I've modified this button to be called infinite. And the reason I did that was when I right click on it, it accesses my settings. And when I right click on it, you can see all the settings that it has. The first one here is called method. Now, for those of you who are familiar with dodge and burn, typically use curves or a blank layer or something like that. So I'm going to click on curves here, go back. And if I click on the button, it's going to execute a standard curve. And so you can see here, it adds these two folders for dodge and burn and within them has the standard curve that we are all accustomed to. Now, let me just delete that really quick. And if I go back here into my settings and I right click on infinite, because that's what it's called for the infinite curves, I'm going to come down here to infinite curves and click on that. And the button itself can also be renamed to whatever you want. You can change the actual group name once it's set up. Um, and also the independent um, dodge and burn in case you call it something else in your own specific language. Now when I'm going to click back and back again. I'm going to hit play. And over here, you can see that it looks the same. It has a curve within these folders here, but you'll notice two things. Number one, it has a different kind of uh, anchor layout here. And the same thing goes for burn. It has a different anchor layout here. And the reason why I did that was simple. I asked Stefan to kind of give me a little quote about how it works and the reason why we did it. And the reality is we wanted a very accurate way to dodge and burn without any color shifts that happen across a spectrum. Now, granted, based on the processor that you use, based on the image that you use, there's a lot of different variables. So one might not fit everything, but we want to get something, a method that is a little bit more true to life than the existing methods out there. And so when I have a little document here, I want to show you, and it's kind of a mission statement for our dodge and burn. It says we've tried to find the best way in Photoshop to change exposure exactly one stop without modifying or messing up the colors. And that's something you find often is when you're dodging and burning, sometimes you end up getting color shift and saturation shift. So we wanted to mitigate that almost as if it's adjusting it similar to a raw file and you're bringing it up an exposure to one stop without messing it up as much as possible. So the way that we kind of did it was we used and looked through a ton of different photos, different lighting conditions across multiple camera brands. And we also looked at color charts and we tried different dodge and, dodge and burn methods that exist today. And we try to find their weaknesses and improve on them. So that's kind of how infinite dodge and burn was created with a lot of like research and just playing around and trying to see how accurate we can get these results. And I want to show you what that looks like. So if I come over here to my dodge, and you might be wondering, why are they in individual folders? Well, the reason why they're in folders is because let's say that I, for example, um, let me just reduce the smoothing to zero, flow to 100, opacity to 100. Let's say that I do something like this, right? Um, let's say that I want to modify, I don't know, the colors as well. Like, you know, you already dodged in a specific area, but you're also trying to say, maybe add a hue and saturation adjustment layer you don't have to add another mask again. It's already contained within the same folder. So you can make adjustments after dodging and burning without adding a mask or a separate mask. 
you know what I mean. So it's just really convenient to have everything under this one folder. With that being said, I'm going to quickly just undo what I did there. And let me show you a real world example here. So this is a photo that I took of my friend Arbini Nola. She's a phenomenal model based out of Houston. And um, one thing I liked about this shoot was the fact that we shot it outside. But because of which, you know, you have different saturation issues, typically across the skin anyway. Um, and one thing that I want to fix here is like the under eyes. There's going to be a little bit more um, brightening I want to do here. I'm going to dodge them a little bit. So I'm going to be changing my flow to 2%. And for those of you who haven't seen my workflow before, um, I have a retouching series in case you would like to learn more about it, or also check out some of the other videos within this channel to see, um, you know, other retouching content. But anyways, I'm going to be using my standard brush tool set to white at a 2% flow and 100% opacity and 0% smoothing. I also am just going to, I don't know why that's at negative one. Let me just put that to zero. This, these two don't matter as long as they at 0%. Now I'm going to actually do a couple of brush strokes here like this. And you can see what happens is it really lightens up the under eyes in a way where it doesn't cause a lot of color desaturation going on. It keeps it really nice and natural. And the same thing goes for other areas. Perhaps I would like to lighten this area up a little bit. The colors blend in much, much nicer in comparison to, say, the standard curve. Now, what I want to preface this by saying is that, again, if you're processing it through, say, Capture One or Camera Raw or On One, the base colors are going to be all very different, even with the same raw file. But one thing to keep in mind is that that's why Infinite Retouch has multiple options for you. So if Infinite Curves doesn't work for you, you're able to use a standard curve or a 50% gray layer, and it makes it really easy and seamless. You can see here that even though I'm, you know, kind of lightening these areas up, it blends in really nicely in terms of the color as well. And if I go ahead and do the same for this area here near the mouth, you'll see that as I turn this on and off, the colors themselves stay relatively nice. And that's kind of what I want to go for here is if we're adjusting the exposure by say a stop or less, it makes it really nice and uh, clean. The colors are clean. You get less, less need to adjust and fix the colors after the fact that one's dodge and burn is done. And that's typically the goal. When you're doing a retouching workflow, you have your dodge and burn process. And then after that, you do your color correction or your color grading. So you want the colors to stay as nice as possible in order for the image to hold up the integrity of the colors. So you're not, you're not trying to fix a bunch of color tones after the fact, especially if it's being caused by any of the steps that you're doing along the retouching process. Okay. Also keep in mind that over here on the left hand side, it has a um, soft light, soft light button. If I right click on it, you can change the method that you want. You can see I changed it earlier, change it back to 50% gray if I want to. I can also rename it if I so choose to. Also other cool fact is that you can run an action after that. So if I decide to say, like, go to my actions that I have here, I could possibly even run a grain action here, and then say apply, what happens is that when I click on the button, you can see it runs my dodge and burn 50% gray layer, and it adds um, a grain layer after that too. So you can kind of daisy chain or connect various methods really easily, which is really, really cool. And it gives you two buttons, so you can decide what two methods you'd like to use often. That's kind of how I like to envision this, and I'm just going to kind of bask in the beautiful results that I've gotten here really quickly. Um, and you can see the colors actually stayed really nice, visibly pleasing, I should say. Again, if you would like to try it out for free, 100% free, go in the description, download it today, and I do hope you like it. Again, the only not included in the full purchase is going to be the ability to modify anything within the panel itself. So for example, so if you decide to come over to the user tab here and save your own set of layers, which you can do here with Infinite Retouch, um, that is something that you have to upgrade for. So if you're interested in checking out the other options here, go to Infinite Retouch 
um, infinitetools.com slash uh, uh, infinite-retouch, and I'll link that in the description. You can see all the videos if you just scroll down to the Academy page where you can learn all about all the functions of this panel and see what it could do for you. I personally believe in it because I use it for my workflow. As you can see, it's very functional and versatile, has frequent separation options. It has uh, healing options. It has the standard color correction options and multiple grain engines too, in case you're interested in getting really cool film grain scans. So there you go. I hope you liked it. I don't want to ramble on too much. I love talking about it. I get really excited and um, I can't wait to see what you do with it. And that's it. Hope you have a good time and please check out the other videos on this channel and all the links in the description for more information.